I love making breakfast and making robots. So today I'm gonna to make a breakfast making robot. We're gonna start with making the perfect boiled egg. And if you like that, we'll do some other breakfast ingredients in the future. But first of all, what's happened to Open Dog? The answer to that is nothing. It's right here. It's exactly the same as it was at the end of the last episode because I was quite busy building Bumblebee the life-size real transformer at the end of last year and I haven't done anything. There's quite a few parts on order though and I'm waiting for some firmware improvements on the O-Drive as well as replacing all the Arduinos with Teensy and lots of other metal upgrades. I've got a little lathe now to make some upgraded parts. So the work's going to be going on in the background and then there'll be an episode on Open Dog when I've got something substantial to show. We're in the kitchen, because that's where you make breakfast, but what do we need to make the perfect boiled egg? That's right, we need the perfect hot water. Now unfortunately, the hob in my kitchen's rather nice, but it's one of these touch control ones, which is really annoying, and it's gonna be very hard to control the temperature with the machine. So instead, I'm gonna use one of these. So this is a pretty cheap little single hot plate you can buy for not very much money, it's 1500 watts, and it's got a knob on that we can just turn that and turn up the temperature and turn it down again. And that means I can interface to it easily by turning this knob with a servo. I'm not gonna do it in this episode, but I'm gonna do it in the future. And that makes it much easier to control the temperature of the water. So the plan is of course to boil water on this hob and then we're going to lower in the egg, I think in this sieve, so that we can boil it and we're gonna build a robot arm that takes it in and out and also controls the water temperature. So first of all, we need to work out how we're gonna measure the temperature of boiling water and regulate the temperature to stop the pan boiling over. So to measure the water temperature, we're gonna use an Arduino Uno and a DS18B20 temperature module. This one is waterproof and claims it does up to 108 degrees. Not sure if the cable will melt, uh, but we can test that out. And the code for this is pretty simple. You can find out all about it on the Arduino website. It's a pretty simple sketch. It uses the Dallas One Wire library, and then it will just give you the temperature in a serial monitor. So I've got my laptop right here plugged into the Arduino, and if we open a serial monitor, it should initialize, and we can see that we've got a temperature of about 15 or 16 degrees, which seems about right. It's pretty cold in here, and of course these surfaces are cold. So let's dump that in the water and see if the temperature goes up and see if it melts. Yep, that pan's getting hot. We're somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees already. Yep, looking pretty good. I've just attached the cable to the handle here with a piece of Velcro, so the sensor's just suspended there in the water. Hopefully this uh, PVC cable won't melt. But um, yeah, seems to be monitoring the temperature okay. And of course, in centigrade, water boils at 100 and freezes at zero. So we need to keep an eye on the temperature, make sure it doesn't go over about 95, and the pan will never boil over, hopefully. Yep, we're getting there. For now, I'm just gonna turn the knob by hand to try and keep the temperature somewhere between 90 and 100 so the pan doesn't boil over. But it's important to say if we did automate that with a servo, it's important we do have a threshold so we're not just sitting on one degree, constantly turning on and off really quickly because then we basically cause power surges and all sorts of nasty things. So we should probably regulate the temperature somewhere between 93 and 97, turn the water on and off accordingly as we get to those thresholds. All right, we're at 96 and a half degrees, so let's see what that looks like. So it looks like lots of steam and some bubbles on the surface of the pan so it's definitely hot enough to cook an egg in boiling water and we're only at 97 degrees now so as soon as we exceed 100 it'll all boil over and that'll be terrible so for now I'm just going to turn the knob and try and maintain it which seems pretty easy to do so I'm pretty sure I could do that by having a servo to turn it. Yep looks like my sensor's okay as well the cable's gone a bit floppy but it's still in one piece and happily sitting there in the pan. So looking at a pan of almost boiling water isn't that much fun so now let's make the robot arm that can turn the thing like that and put it up and down and then tip it out when it's done. So we've got loads of 3D printed parts. We've got this base, which is sitting on a Lazy Susan turntable, so the whole thing can rotate round. And on there's a slider on some lovely V-wheels. Goes up and down like that. And on that, we're gonna mount the sieve 
but we're going to have it with a rotating piece so it can also tip the egg out when it's done. So to make that slider work, we're going to use the encoder-driven linear actuator project that I did in a video a while ago, so check out the channel for that where you can get all the CAD and all the code and so on. So this motor's got an encoder on the back and we've got an Arduino and a motor driver here which will allow reading of that encoder and positioning the slider. So I fitted my motor to the top there and we've got a coupler and some bearings for the lead screw and then we've got our sliding thing on V-wheels, we've mounted the Arduino you know, and the motor driver. I've made a difference to the code from last time though. Originally we typed the numbers into the serial terminal where we wanted to position the actuator and now I've hard coded it so I've got two pins and if I ground them it should go up and down. So let's just go and ground that pin. We should find it moves down a bit and we can hard code that position to get the pan in the right place and the other one should bring it up again. So what we're going to have is an Arduino that handles the positioning of this and it's using interrupts on the encoder so that's going to be separate and then we're going to have a master Arduino that drives everything else. It's also going to drive servos of course which also use interrupts which is why I've separated out this interrupt handling from the main Arduino that's also going to run an LCD display and do the button handling. And that looks like this which is an Arduino Mega in a lovely little case and we'll look around the front in a minute. So I've got some power distribution and things like that. We've actually got the main power coming in from a big LiPo that's going to power that motor on the robot arm. There's another little power supply that's going to go off to power some servos on the robot arm and we've got a 5 volt regulator in here that powers the Arduino from the battery and of course we'll power the other Arduino Uno as well. So let's have a look around the front. So we've got a little display around the front which is one of these ones of an I squared C backpack and I'm going to put all of the code links in the description of this video so you can check out how it works. We've got the temperature sensor here and you'll notice I've actually got the readout now instead of the serial terminal on the Arduino IDE I'm actually putting it on this LCD and we've got some buttons and other functionality. So now it says press yellow to start if we press the yellow button it's going to wait for the water temperature to arrive to 90. I can put my hand on this sensor we can warm it up and see the temperature going up but I'm not going to get to 90 degrees so for testing for now we just press the red button and then it says the water's at temperature. It's going to obviously move the egg in using the robot arm which takes a few seconds and then it will count down six minutes. At the moment it only does six seconds for testing but we'll um, increase that and then it says the eggs are ready and of course it will move the egg out on the robot arm and then it says press red for reset and if we press red it goes back to the beginning again there's two spare buttons for other functionality perhaps when we actually regulate the temperature of the water using a servo or turn the hob on and off. So the main part of this code is a state machine and we've got an integer called state which starts at zero and counts up one two three and so on as we go through the different stages of the automation. Obviously we're checking the other conditions as well so here we're checking if the yellow button has been pressed and that's input pull up which means it's a zero when you press the button. Here we're checking the red button and of course we'll change that for the temperature getting up to 90 degrees. So I've got some delays here at the moment so we can move the robot arm that I still need to put in there but essentially once the conditions are met it displays something on the LCD and then increments the state and it moves on to the next one. For the timers we've bookmarked the time so to make this variable the same time as the system time which is millis which is the system time of the Arduino since it booted and we're going to add 6,000 to that. Eventually we'll add 360,000 milliseconds, which is 6 minutes, which is the perfect time to boil an egg. But for now it's just on 6 seconds for testing. And then basically um, we look at the difference in time between the time we've set and the actual time and display that on the screen. And also when we get to the end, when the time left is 0, we can increment to the next state. And so it continues. And I'll put a link to this code in the description. <laughs> So that goes up and down and operates to get the egg in the pan. This thing also rotates and now there's a servo here which can tip the egg out into a chute so it can serve it on your plate once it's done. So I've just got to put the other motor in and get those wired up and make them part of the state machine. Right, I fitted the additional motor for that turntable, everything's wired up, but before we can test if we can make the perfect boiled eggs, I need to tell you about the sponsor for this video. And this video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in all sorts of stuff, in design, business and even electronics. 
Skillshare is pretty reasonably priced. It's only $10 a month on an annual plan for unlimited access. So you can fuel your creativity and your desire to learn in 2019, perhaps fulfill your 2019 resolutions and even improve your career. There's loads of stuff on there. You can have a look at Arduino coding, even robotics, mechanics, 3D printing, all sorts of stuff that I do and plenty of other stuff as well. So join more than 7 million creators who are learning on Skillshare. If you use the link in the description to this video to sign up, the first 500 of my subscribers who use that link will get unlimited access on a two month free trial. So don't forget to check that out and you better do it soon. Perhaps you want to make your own breakfast making machine like I have. But now let's check out if we can make the perfect boiled eggs. Right, it's time to start the machine. So first of all, we need to put an egg in. Eventually there'll be a robot arm or a chute that puts eggs in. And then we just need to press start on here. And the first thing it does is wait for the water. So I better turn the hob on. There we go. Eventually it'll of course have a motor that turns it on. There is a thermostat on this hob. So actually it probably could maintain the temperature by itself. So it might be quite easy to control the temperature. For the moment I'm just going to do it manually to keep an eye on it. So I'll wait for the water to get up to temperature. Right, our water temperature is almost there. It's 85 degrees and the arm will move in when we exceed 90 degrees. So we'll just keep an eye on that and we should find that when we get there, it puts the egg in the water. Yep, yeah, my water's starting to bubble, so we're almost there. Here we go, nearly there. 90 degrees. Yeah, there it goes. And the egg's almost submerged. Well, it looks like it's cooking, so I just need to keep an eye on this and check it doesn't boil over. As I said, the hob's actually got a thermostat, so it might be possible just to turn the knob down an arbitrary amount with a servo and just keep it on its own thermostat. But for now, I'm going to do it manually. And you can see the countdown time has started for 360,000 milliseconds, which is exactly six minutes, which is the perfect time it takes to boil an egg. Yep, I've just turned this knob down a bit to about five out of ten. You can see the little red light comes on just there. So if I set it a bit lower, it keeps the thermostat and it doesn't boil over. And I think my pan's at about 98 degrees, according to the thermostat. Right, we're about halfway through. We've got about 150,000 milliseconds on the timer and the egg hasn't boiled over, just turning the knob down. So that looks pretty good. So we just need to wait for the time to expire and then it'll take the egg out and then we should have the perfect boiled egg. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eggs are ready. Da, 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 da. Thank you. And I'm able to catch it and not let it smash on the counter. Even though it's hard boiled, it should be fine. But is it the perfect hard boiled egg? Or well, is only one way to find out without breaking the plate? It sort of is. It's a bit squishy still. It depends if you like your yolks runny. Could do it for a few more minutes, but of course we can just adjust the timer and also we can glue this plate back together. All right, so that went pretty well. Let me know in the comments in this video if you want to see me make some more breakfast making machine components. What's next? Perhaps bacon, definitely toast and maybe tea. But put that in the comments if you eat something special for breakfast and you want me to make a machine that cooks it for you. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget the first 500 of my subscribers who sign up using the link in the description get a two month free trial. All right, that's all for now.